Only folks are not committing to order. Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, just so please read roll call. Clark? Here. Orvino? Here. Ermeline is absent and excused. Easker? Here. Wyland? Here. We have a motion to approve minutes from January 29th, 2024. So moved. Motion by Easker? I'll second it. Second by Corvino. Motion's been approved. All in favor say aye. 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 Any more discussion? Opposed? Motion passed. Uh, public comments? Any? So if you don't have a particular item on the agenda tonight, if there is something you want to comment about, you should do it. Otherwise, you won't have a chance to speak. Okay. Uh, number six, discussion and possible action improvements at Yellow Banks. So we have uh, Dan Higginbotham in the crowd with us to discuss part of this. Um, and I tried to capture what I could based on our discussions and we previously discussed at the January meeting as far as making improvements at Yellow Banks uh, for the launch, parking lot, et cetera. Um, I'll also talk to Bill Bertram from the Maryland County Walk Marathon and Park Foundation. Encouraging us to apply for uh, a grant through their process, which is through the Community Foundation of North Central Wisconsin. For additional funds. Um, Dan has moved forward with pursuing improvements there based on the recommendation of the committee at the last meeting. Um, but we really need a recommendation for staff to move forward with applying for state federal grants, et cetera, to do the improvements. Um, I reviewed the court, I shared it with Dan as far as what's mentioned in there. I also put it in the packet. So there is improvements recommended in the corp, um, also in the um, map portion of the corp, there's also a, you know, a shrewd drawing of the improvements as far as um, a parking lot, et cetera. Also shared a copy of the previous master plan that was completed for Yellow Banks, which shows improvements there. Um, we also did complete some improvements as far as the bank there to make it more accessible. Um, back when we did the launch in 1516 on Ross, we also did some bank improvements at Yellow Banks, which made it easier to access uh, because before it was just a washout with a hill path going down to that washout in the sand. So we do have better accommodations, but there is still a need for improvements because you have parking lots which are on the east west sides next to the rivers in the middle um, of the park and just being able to access it easier pull up to it back up to it whatever it is um, and as dan stated you know in one of the emails corresponds with uh, dnr is that you know that portion of the river is probably one of the most accessible during all seasons so it doesn't deal with the low water issues that we see from, you know, Clubhouse Road or from Jay or from Ross, where you deal with low water issues where you actually have to walk your kayak or you know, through certain sections. Um, the water stays pretty consistent, obviously, where they can float the entire way. Um, but part of the, being able to access the water for canoeing and kayaking is possibly getting out of your vessel too you know, walk it around the water or trees, et cetera. But um, they did do some improvements, Schofield did, as far as removing logs, et cetera, on a big portion of that. Um, so we're not dealing with the issues of, you know, down trees in the waterway also. So really the big question is, do you want us to pursue grant opportunities for it through the state and federal? Um, application deadlines May 1, Dan has done a lot of the upfront work with preparing, you know, uh, you know, somewhat of a site plan 
cost estimate, which it's not detailed at this point, which we'll have to detail it, um, and the village's portion. Because the village is going to be a 50-50 batch. Um, there's multiple opportunities um, as far as us, which is labor, materials, equipment, where it uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's cash out of pocket. Um, but if we do use materials, we also have to bid those materials or, you know, reasonably state why we should use them because they're the lowest cost. Um, and their grant requirements are a lot more difficult to deal with than, say, a foundation or, you know, where you don't have to do the detailed reports, uh, the daily um, forced labor and equipment. So you're tracking everything, every single dollar amount that is um, part of it. And you have to do monthly reports to them based on that. The other part about getting any state or federal is that you're tied to it in perpetuity. So forever. So you do those improvements, you can never back out and say you're not going to maintain it. Hmm. And we've talked about this before at committee level. And it's, some things are good and some things are that bad because you're tied to it forever. As we tried for five, six years to get rid of the warm house at Weston, you know, like you're tied to it forever. Um, and we still have a parcel at Weston Elementary. There's a sign over there stating that this area is reserved for um, recreational use forever. Because you literally cannot get all underneath those requirements. Um, and there are programs to exchange it out for other properties, et cetera, but you are literally tied to it. Dan, you have anything to add or? Yeah, Dan Higginbotham, 2625 North Western Avenue. Not really, Sean, you've done a good job of capturing. Um, the only thing that is that this is the, you're all familiar with Great Binary Heritage Water Trail, and this is the upper reach of that trail at Yellow Banks. So it's a national, they're seeking, it's a state trail now, they're seeking national recognition for the trail. So it's, it doesn't, it doesn't require an upgraded landing, but it would be nice. And it's part of the, part of the attractiveness to the state and federal government for funding for that, uh, for the landing. It would be nice from, you know, we've talked about organizing some races and such, some where we would, be able to utilize uh, an improved facility there. So it'd be nice to kind of looking at targeting 2026 for that potential activity. And so it'd be nice to get the get the improvements created before at that by that time. And so the foundation also plans on placing uh, signage this year, um, which will contract contact us about. So as far as being part of the Great Pinery Heritage Waterway. Um, and then, like I said, Dan put together um, some improvements, proposed improvements, um, you know, and has touched base with our coordinator for, grant coordinator for the DNR, um, and she emailed us again today uh, about setting up a meeting with her for initial discussion, which is part of the requirement. You don't actually send in a grant application until you have initial discussions with them. So, um, and she's new. So she wants to involve Pam Rood, who I've worked with before. Um, she was part of our grant that we got approved for um, the Ross Avenue pro project. Um, and it was after the fact though, unfortunately. We ranked number two, we awarded number one and they couldn't do the improvements. So then they contacted us and so we already started the project, which that um, factors into receiving it. It was a river and trails grant. And there's multiple opportunities for this property for the launch, um, et cetera. It's just, you know, do we want to commit to doing something additional right now? Uh, as far as a grant through the um, West Marathon County Parks Foundation, they funnel theirs through the Community Foundation, North Central Wisconsin. Uh, their grant period is currently closed. Uh, the new grant period opens up on July 1 through July 31. So they do two uh, awards per year, uh, and it can vary depending on what your request is. 
the other thing with the state and federal is their period right now is application due May 1, but it's 24, 2024 and 2025. Because typically they award August, September, so you don't really start construction in 24. We start in 25 if you're going to do it. <clears throat> The application is due May 1st. Uh, the application is due May 1st. Yep. And if you look through some of the documentation, and Jess brought it up to me today, this is our document, the Lower Eau Claire River Water Trail. And it was more of a, um, <laughs> this is what we're going to do in the future. So if you see some of the launch sites, they've actually been developed, even though on here it says proposed. Sorry. Sean. If, uh, let's just assume we get all the grant support we need, does does construction close the park or anything like that? No. Okay. No. And based on the initial response from the DNR, it looks like a good project with multiple opportunities for grants. She also commented that she must be a paddler uh, and she liked the idea of the signage that is placed at each bridge where you actually have mileage. So you don't just get lost on the river and have no idea when you're going to get back, even though, you know, Jess knows her portion. It takes like four plus hours to go from her house down to clubhouse. It's um, even a tube though. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it could take you three plus hours from Ross to, uh, you know, the dam. So, I mean, people know this, but it's not public knowledge. So if you have some idea of the mileage, Based on river conditions, I'm sure there are people are paddling it right now, just because it's wide open and uh, it's not moving super fast for this time of year. And that is me right there in the front of that boat. So, by the way, <laughs> nobody probably knows that, but that is me. In the front of that. The people taking the picture fell off the boat within 100 feet of the event. So that saved the camera. Yeah, they did. They had it in a bag. Are these maps on our website? Uh, they are. How much staff time do you think this will be? Um, for the initial improvements, it all depends on if we want to fund it monetary and have it contracted out or if we want to do it with staff. Okay. And Dan has put together a somewhat rough estimate. Um, when he was here in January, he was like looking for 60 initially for the parking lot, without the other improvements pretty much. Um, I, and we're at like 120 now? Yeah, with I think with with the with lunch the, and with, the, with everything, with the dock. Yeah, so he's looking at uh, Easy Dock, right? Yes. Um, which helps you put in it's a floating dock where you can set your kayak in. It's got uh, paddle locks too, so you can actually lock your paddle in. Climb in your kayak, you're not in the water yet, and you just move across the paddle locks to get yourself into the river. Um, a lot safer. Um, the only issue with that system, but also due to our location, is it's not ADA accessible. We'd have, to, we'd have to do a ton more improvements to make that actual area ADA accessible. It's not just the dock. Just... Is that what they use in Wausau? Yeah, Wausau's are similar to those, um, but they also, but based on where they have theirs, they can actually use an ADA accessible one because the entire system is floating. You could actually roll off the bank into it, where ours has a nice deep pitch on the bank. Mm -hmm. um, and there's that much water there right now, you know? So um, there would definitely be some moving things around there just to get the docks to Does that come out in the winter then, or does it stay through the ice? It would have to be removed um, just due to it being a river for sure. So it's real, like I said, it's really just, do you want us to apply for grants? Um, well, and then we would be liable for 50%, you said. Correct. And it's coming out of where? Uh, you don't need to figure that out. 
if it moves on beyond this, it would go to finance and board to uh, determine where financing would come from. And we need to put together a full estimate, which would determine how much our labor would be, how much our equipment and materials would be, because that could cover half of that and there would be no monetary portion of it. And it would be over pretty much 2025. Then I'll make a motion to recommend moving forward with applying for grant funds to complete a parking area and improvements to access at Yellow Banks Park. Second. Motion by Cabino, second by Isker. Motion has been approved. All in favor say aye. 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 Any more in discussion? Opposed? Motion passed. Number seven discussion and possible action. Utilizing marketing firm for the Kennedy Park fundraising effort. What time works on? Number seven. Mark Miller. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, so, Mark Miller Park improvements. Um, yeah, I see on my. Oh, is this updated? No. Should be the original. Oh. oh, you're looking at your email that I sent you, yeah. aren't you? And yeah. I changed it after that. <laughs> um, All right, sorry about that. Uh, number seven, discussion and possible action improvements at Mockingbird. So this item being on the agenda is really for a couple of reasons. Um, as the village board approved the planning for looping the sewer main through Mock Miller Park um, in 2026 proposed, correct, Michael? Um, they approved the consultant uh, last Monday. Uh, and so they're going to be looping the water main through the north part, off Quentin through the north part of Mock Mueller and over to Kramer. And then um, we originally proposed doing restrooms on the north end at Mock Mueller on the north side, uh, but there's no sewer out there. So with the sewer main extension, possibility of actually tying into it would be there. Um, and there may be, may be some cost savings in, you know, tying into the sewer main initially versus they, they'll be putting a stub there, I'm assuming, based on our plan for mock dealer, um, but also the need to extend the water main from when north to at least falls, um, which would get the water there. So you would have that trench open putting in the sewer main to Kramer possibly taking the water and run it into the park at that point. So should we be coordinating those simultaneously, save some costs as far as installation? Um, and also, if you look at what is in the core, which is what was approved in December by the board, uh, is the um, restroom, shelter, drinking fountain, pickleball courts, um, and that's initially in there in the one to five year goal was to do a pickleball course, um, six to 10 for the restroom shelter area. We know they kind of coincide with each other. We do the pickleball courts. They would love to have shelter restrooms, obviously completely as our current, um, restroom facility is way to the south end, literally mostly due to the, there's no sewer in Quinton street except for 700 plus feet to the west um so we have a grinder station lift pump there that pushes the sewage up there um, we do have water in quentin which helps um and the, really the second reason we're here is to discuss why pick a ball and why now um we know there's a huge need for it uh, we talked about it several times over the planning process uh the corp um but like I said, 2026, two years away, you know, should we try to coincide these projects? Uh, we're trying to do a mass fundraising campaign for improvements at Kennedy Park. Uh, but we also have some very passionate people in the audience, uh, in the community. And based on our previous experience with Pickleball, they literally came to us, they left. And a few months later, they raised all the money for Pickleball cards at Marathon. So we know they're driven to raise funds and their ability 
has been proven that they're good at doing it. So uh, I met with Trustee Zagami. I've talked to him a few times over the past week or two. Um, we looked at the cost of spent, which was 745 for 16 ports, um, another 545 for the shelter restroom area. Um, also talked to the administrator, Kiebert, who got a quote for a pickleball court down in town of Rome, um, looking at like 50,000 per court. Uh, but we also don't know what the spec was. So we don't know if it's two layers of blacktop, if it's concrete, what type of fencing, et cetera. So, um, Trustee Zagami has taken it upon himself to help with preparing a little better cost estimate. Hopefully he thinks it's low and we talked about all the estimates being high. This one actually feel like feels like it's a little bit, little bit low. Um, and it all depends on what you do with, you know, when you do one for 50,000, if you do 16, then you may only be 30,000 of these. Cause you're already prepping the area, et cetera. Um, you already have the fencing contractor there. You already have the line painting contractor there. So there are some cost savings in doing them all at once. Uh, and I believe we have the president of the Pickleball Association for the area here with us, along with Trustee Zagami for comments. Uh, yes, I'd like to offer some that estimate is low because uh, that's actually the lowest number you can get for that. And I'm not sure if you can do that for that price because for 700,000, I don't think you can do the fencing and everything else. And the shelter over there, the bathroom, and that 700,000 doesn't cut it. Uh, they, they can do the port three different way. They can do a blacktop, concrete, or tile. Tile is the most expensive one. Uh, blacktop is the cheapest one. Concrete is the most recommended. Now, let's say somebody go fifty thousand dollars a port. That's just the cost of the port. And if you do the concrete, you have to put the layer at the top of the port area, the port area, to create the cushion, because playing on a concrete is very hard on your joint. And you can't do that. And when they build the concrete port, they add that cushion in there before they paint it. So I did put research on this stuff. Where, so I think uh, the cost could be possibly about one and a half million. And uh, I think we can do fundraising. And we, I find that cost together much better. But do I know that's where I am now, brother? Uh, considering everything, water, sewer, bathroom facilities, storage, and the shelter, 16 courts, with the fans around it, also material fans to separate the courts, to decrease the traveling of players from one court to another. So, uh, but we can do the fundraising, but at the same time, I think it is good to village a turn you to it before the start of the forest. We said we have this much, then we can raise the rest. Mark was involved with the first fundraising for the Paramount Park. And how much to raise the debt million? I don't remember anymore. I was a few years back. <laughs> uh, but I know uh, at at this time, uh, we are kind of maxed out uh, in what we can offer at uh, those uh, Marathon, Marathon Park courts. They're used extensively uh, in summer. They're used uh, from sun up, up to past sundown. Um, the, what we can offer as far as other options like uh, tournaments, uh, the, those nine courts are pretty well, um, that's, really becoming a limiting factor for what we can offer. 16 courts would be fantastic. Uh, we could really open it up to, to larger tournaments, possibly even uh, regional tournaments. Yeah, so um, so there's nine in Marathon Park. Are there just any more sporadically laid around? Yep. Okay, so, but if we, you know, we've, uh, 
we've gotten into sort of traveling baseball and all of the other sort of sports. So is, is the design that, that you, that is sort of put forward, um, sympathetic to tournament play? This yeah. set up, this is the first time I saw it, so I really okay. need a closer look at so it. Then, so then the next, the follow-up question is, um, you know, as we went through the process for Kennedy Park, uh, we learned about what people need for weekend baseball tournaments and things like that. Are, are there specific things that infrastructure needs for pickleball tournaments that should be considered beyond storage and the courts? I consider everything you need it to. Okay, good. As long as you did it, then I'm good. All yes. Right. Okay, <laughs> fine. The restrooms, uh, water, that's probably number one. Okay. And shade. That's also nice, yes. That's also nice? No, it's required. Yeah, really. it is, you know, oh, we really don't have it very much. And you don't, complaint. but that's a big issue. Right, we just want it, and my thinking is I'd like to make it if, if we're going to go down this street, I'd like to make it conducive to being a tournament location on a relatively regular basis. So that way, you know, we can pull from a bunch of different pots of money. I think the other thing I'll look at is to do this project, it definitely bring people to the village right. and they stay in the village because of the location of them and the closest area to them are the Hotel and hotel in the in the village. So, it, at least that, that's one motive for me, definitely, because that helped the business. So, as far as a cost estimate, you were saying a million and a half. So, seven forty-five for the pickleball and five forty-five for the restrooms. We're not far off. Well, the the shelter going to be at least the way I'll picture it going to be about 20 feet wide, 100 feet long. And our estimate for that about 250,000. And you're pretty close to right on because uh, most of our shelters are done by Polygon. They're 20 by 44s. So you said 20 by 100. Uh, and based on our previous costs, estimates for doing that type of shelter. And we all, we all know concrete went from $45 uh, yard to almost 200 in a matter of a short period of time of uh, just figuring out the concrete cost itself and then steel etc for the type of shelter you need just one more thing Hushang. um just because i know it comes up are there so i see the trees here between the trees in the house um are there some sort of natural sound barriers out there because pickleball has got volume for itself. Yes. Yeah. The houses are, I look at it, there's only one house to the north of me. Yep. Yeah. That one, I'm not sure anybody lived in there because okay. Richardson was living there before with his wife, but they're not there anymore. Yeah. But the rest of the houses are the other side of the trees. I think there's some barrier okay. there. Also around the court, they put the fence Lost the shade around that, so that's going to help some. Okay. Yeah, we talked about some sort of sound barrier. Yeah. Um, which would be slats versus um, fabric, because no fabric wears out really fast or it gets blown apart really fast, um, just to deaden the sound. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. To some extent. And we got a little more in depth in our conversation than you should at this point, just because we don't really have a plan. We have a well, we have a plan. We just don't have actual detailed drawings at this point. We need to we need to set up a plan, and uh, so because when we do the fundraising, we have to show the people mm -hmm. what we're planning to do. What we have right now is uh, eight by eleven or eleven by twenty-one uh, inches sheet, which is really small, and just shows that the layout of the court center. And he taught me. He taught me. He, he taught me a lot because we talked through a lot of stuff. Where literally, if you want to walk on the third court, you literally the other two courts stop playing for safety purposes. And I'm like, well, no, nothing else to do that. Like you have open walkways between courts where you can get hit, so they stop play during that. And there's a way to immediately, you know, get rid of that by where you place your fence, where you place your gates, etc 
where you can keep play going and not feel like you're going to get hit. Um, there's additional costs in doing that because you're adding a gate for every two courts in the middle of the two courts, but you can literally instead of walking in front of the other two courts, you could actually get in there. Um, and it was way more in depth. We're like designing it already and nothing's been approved, but uh, I mean, I learned a lot, you know, just as far as safety area, on the outside spectator area, uh, and just making it the best it could be in there. So, uh, Hussein is saying we need a uh, layout. How do we go about doing that so we can proceed with fundraising? Well, I don't want to speak for him, but he also stated that's going to increase the cost by doing that. But you know, we could probably work with the trustee to figure something out, maybe. Right. <laughs> I know he helped out a ton on the Marathon Park one. Um, he was there every day doing the construction services side inspection. Um, he also worked on the design. Um, not saying he's going to do that this time, but it's just, you know, if this is something we should move forward with planning for. And I mean, we would need to budget for it or replace it in CIP as far as the village's portion of it. Um, and it could be design, could be a portion of uh, construction, but that would be a, like I said, financing, finance and board discussion. It would just be if the front committee felt like this is a project we should move forward with at this time. And we know we have a lot of other stuff going on. Um, <laughs> um, but it's a very passionate group. Last time they approached us, they literally left here, met with Wasserman and the Pony, raised money in a matter of a very short, you know, they're very good at fundraising. They did it. They got the courts built, um, and pickleball is the number one growing sport right now. I just eating my own drugs. I designed those for, and I was there there in the construction. On the stuff to end up with right there. So the part I was out of it was the fencing around that which I thought they can manage it. So other than that, well, I can help out a lot, make sure all the planning is okay, our cost is okay, project goes around. All right, I'll make a motion to recommend moving forward with planning for improvements at Mockular Park. Motion by Carvino. Second. Second by Eusker. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any more discussion? Opposed? Motion passed. Should be good now. You're right, Pat. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Discussion and possible action utilizing marketing firm for the Kennedy Park fundraising effort. So we touched on this discussion last month and everybody thought it was a good idea, but we didn't actually take any action on it. So um, in the past month, um, I did meet with one marketing consultant. It's a firm we worked with previously um, as far as developing a story, a strategy as far as moving forward. We have multiple groups involved and if they all go their separate ways to raise money for Kennedy Park, we feel like that could be detrimental to the project uh, because you could have one group that raises the funds and another one that doesn't. Uh, but if there's a strategy as far as where these funds go, how it's built in this timeline versus this is my one goal, this is the only thing I'm doing, and then what happens with the other groups? Just one part gets built, the others don't, you know, actually succeed in the fundraising. And after meeting with the consultant, they thought the idea of having one direction forward was the best and not the village leading the effort, literally the kids leading the effort. Because why are we doing this? Who are we doing it for? That's the whole story. I mean, Dino brought it up like literally. Why is this being done? And it's for the kids. It's not for us. 
because a lot of us will not ever see it come to fruition as far as our children playing there, you know? <laughs> yeah, me, no, no, I know it's not going to happen. <laughs> Mine's been done for two years. So, um, but I still see it as, you know, the direction to go. I mean, we talk about smaller communities having complexes, Clover, Rapids, Manaqua, you know? Everywhere. I mean, everywhere. everywhere. And here we are, we have <laughs> hundred plus thousand in our, what they consider our metro area of Maryland County, and we don't have a conference. And I believe that all the kids, all the organizations need this. But also, you know, we have the school partially involved, um, but they just had a massive capital campaign, as we know, for 30 plus million dollars, and they raised it really fast. Um, but they also have a need for kids. Softball, eighth grade baseball. They had two eighth grade baseball teams, which I was like, what? They had two? Um, which we know there's a lot of kids in baseball, and they usually fall off around that time. I'm sure that's part of the goal of the school is to keep them playing. And we have a team at DC Evers that has two seniors on it. Was it. Two years ago? Three years ago? Last year we had three, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, the, it, it really drops off. I mean, and you know, my son, our group, the 11s, 12s, 9, 10s, we had 100 plus kids in that age group. We had 10 teams, biggest ever. Um, and then all of a sudden you get to 13, 14, and you're lucky if you could kill two or three. Um, it's amazing that you can drop that fast. Um, so we have a need for that. Um, we have some youth organizations that are very driven. I mean, softball's in a weird situation right now. New president, husband, wife team, don't know exactly what happened in the past based on our two and a half hour meeting, um, but really needs some help. Uh, you got hockey, which is, seems very organized, ready to raise some money, build this thing as fast as possible. Youth baseball, for sure. They're ready. They want to go. They're ready to go. Uh, Jimmy met with Community Foundation last week, I believe, are setting up a pass through account um, so they can do all the fundraising that would go through the Community Foundation. Um, so it's really just how do we move forward? Is a marketing firm the right way? And if you feel like it is, then I would meet with others and then present a um, you know, a, a cost to the board finance and determine if there's funding for it. Um, we know there is different funds available. We have a uh, parkland dedication account. We also have some ARPA funding left. Um, it all depends on which direction they would want to go, if they wanted to go that way. I'm not saying they want to, but we really want a recommendation from the committee as far as if that sort of direction we should go. But if you use ARPA funds, or no, if we should use a marketing consultant or somebody or to really build our strategy as far as how we're going to do this fundraising. Um, and literally, the one I met with said, Set your goal on when you want to present, and they will work to the current point from there. So, if we say a month, they're going to build it to be ready in a month. Then I want it needs to be presented to. You know, a foundation or private donors, etc. So you you're not recommending the village should put a dollar amount on this at all? Uh, no dollar amount. I mean, because uh, at this level, we don't um, determine where the funding comes from. That would come from either finance or board. You just determine if we should move forward with looking at a marketing fund, marketing company to present this plan. To build the marketing materials for, for the fundraising in Kennedy Park. And it, I mean, we talked about it pretty extensively at the last meeting, as far as, and Dino, I believe, was right on because I don't do fundraising, but just literally building that strategy on how to move forward and then, you know, telling the story, the village's investment, what we've done previously, what we're doing now, the playgrounds. You know, the launch just doesn't matter what it is, just the village's investment in parks. And then telling the story of the youth groups, who needs it, why they need it, the benefits to the community. Um, 
you know, we talk about pickleball tournaments, we talk about baseball tournaments. We know baseball's been running three or four tournaments a year for multiple years now. Uh, imagine what they could do with five fields at one location. Um, and I gave you some of the AI technology information that I received from last July and you have 3,600 people at Kennedy Park on July 12th. That is a huge marketing tool. And we also have a partner that can share that information with us. So the CBB has the AI technology and they can look at those time periods and share that. And that's part of our story. Like there would have been 3,600 people at Kennedy Park that Sunday just because of the pool. It was because of the tournament, you know, um, and the tournament at the end of July. Like, I believe it's a great tool, but that tool is way too expensive for the village to afford to pay for just what we're doing now. Um, and there's benefits for community development, you know, just, you know, Amazon, what's the traffic coming on Highway J? You can look it up from three, three days ago right now. You know, what's the traffic coming on Highway 29? It's just a great tool that was never available to us till this all came along. Um, you, can, you can't use it at schools, police departments, military, churches, et cetera. Um, but it's, I thought it was very interesting. And I shared it with directors, uh, number one restaurant that weekend. Guess what? By Kennedy Park. What was it? McDonald's. <laughs> 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 Besides concession stand, um, number one hotel. Number one hotel was not in Weston, unfortunately. It's Holiday Inn and Rockville. You know, um, but it's a it's a super cool tool that could be used for this strategy, I believe. Because you know, Pickleball says, well, they can do tournaments now. How many can you do? How many hotel stays is gonna be? I can tell you how many hotel stays came from there. What communities they came from? Did they just zoom out to Wisconsin? Came from Ryan or Wisconsin Rapids that weekend. You can see how many vehicles traveled from there to Kennedy Park that weekend. Yes, yes I know. It's, it's fascinating yeah. and terrifying. Um, but oh. I could tell you which teams were there just based on that information. So, so that good. builds up my confidence in marketing for this fundraising tool. So I'm all for the fundraising. I'm I guess help me better understand why there's a comprehensive plan with numbers attached to all these parks except for Kennedy. Because we did a full master plan on Kennedy, which breaks down all the fields. And you have the cost estimate for it. I actually have it open too. Um, but so we actually, instead of doing, those are a little more broad estimates, the ones in the floor versus the ones that we did detailed plans which was Kennedy and Prosper. And that's where we came up with the just shy of 15 million. And we all looked at it and we all thought things were very high on certain items, you know, from the mobile, mobilization was a huge one. Well, we weren't planning on doing this in one year. You have to mobilize over a multi-year project. That's a big phase. So one year it'd be $25,000 in mobilization, next year it'd be 50. Um, and it all depends on how fast or how quickly the funds can be raised and then how you phase the destruction. And Michael's probably drawing lines on the Kennedy Park Master Plan right now. <laughs> no, not Because right he now. was looking at it at the last meeting just determining like how you could build based on the current plan, but also how you could utilize the three fields that are there. And if there's a way to actually work around that to some extent. So um, Kennedy Park will be built on fundraising alone, not, no. Um, there could be, obviously, we need a contribution or something from the village to kickstart that campaign, which is what we discussed at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. So if it's budgeting funds for it each year, or if it's dedicating some ARPA funds to it to kickstart the project. So the village has already kicked in whatever that dollar amount is. Yeah, so when we um, talking about that a little bit, I, I think one of the takeaways from the stakeholder meeting and the, the last meet, last committee meeting was that it, it's 
I, I think it's both unrealistic and unfair to, to place the weight of fundraising on external groups. I think the village has to, and I use this exact phrase, has to be the first dollar. It, it, in the, we, we have to show the commitment that we're going to make an investment in this thing for all of us so that then we can strap this all the gyms back and, and ride him to the finish line. Um, so, <laughs> just, I didn't want to picture that. Just saying, yeah. it's, it's on you now. But um, yeah, I think that we have to be the, the first dollar in. And I think one of the ways that we do that is to essentially in, insist that Sean have some meetings with some experts who can talk to him about and talk to us about how to fundraise for the future. Because having, so I was just in Madison and I took a tour of the DeForest Athletic Complex. Holy cow, that's pretty cool. Like, I have no idea if that's a, if that's a municipal thing or if that's just some dude from DeForest who put a bunch of money in, but wow. I mean, we should do that, whatever that is. But um, it, again, it comes down to this idea of these flagship goals setting this this thing out there is this makes Weston a destination. It applies to everything sort of across the board. And that's the story. Like that's the story that the board of trustees can can get behind and say, look, this is this is where we're going. It's yeah, we want to have manufacturing jobs and yeah, we want to have be the healthcare campus. But yeah, we also want to invest in quality of life quite a bit. And so um that I think is is where this should go, and and we at the stakeholders meeting, it's it's a it's a simple enough idea for the story. Is it's the story of me, why I think this is important, the story of of us, why we as a community think this is important, and the story of now, which is why there is a sense of urgency for doing this right now. And I think that we can tell those stories, right? You, you can parade a bunch of dudes in baseball caps and a bunch of softball players and a bunch of hockey players. And, and we can tell this story and we can get in front of a lot of really cool people who want to write checks for this sort of thing. But I think that our staff needs the needs a professional to support them. I think it's just, it's just simply too much for, for our crew to do. I mean, I, we spent 10 long years raising the money for the 400 block without any help and it was a terrible 10 long years. So yeah, I, rather than torture Sean, I think I, I would encourage us to, <laughs> to, to bring in some consultants to, so that Sean can make a, a pitch for us to pay for somebody. And then I guess I, I know we talked about too uh, initially with the plan is there are parts of that master plan that are village projects, I think no matter what, like, you know, that northwest corner is a well house that needs to be updated and we have that included as part of a new warming house and you know we've got the old park shop park office the old warming house we've got the whole conglomerate of uh kind of dilapidated buildings on that corner that i think are probably the village's responsibility and not a youth group's responsibility and you know we talk about the bathrooms needing updating you know some of the parking lots those are Again, you know, the support facilities I, I could see is, you know, they're gonna be there no matter if it's a open green space park as it, or as is, or, you know, we, we do get some uh, master plan taken care of. So uh, I'd say no matter what, we do have some things there that should be done as a village project, not just uh, waiting for somebody else to do it. motion on the floor sure i'll i'll move to recommend working to seeking out and working with a consultant for the can for the fundraising effort any part motion by Carvino. Right, second second by clark all in favor say aye. aye aye any more in discussion oppose motion passed Discussion and possible action replacement for roof panels at Sand Hill and Mount Taylor Park. So this is a project that we've been looking at for a couple of years. Um, and we did receive a cost estimate last spring for 
Um, of course, the cost estimate was good for 30 days. Uh, I basically grabbed it initially just as a budget number. I didn't look at it, unfortunately, didn't look at it close enough to state that literally the company that builds the restrooms is not going to do the removal and installation, which was explained to them that that's what we needed. Like, and he said he would come over and do field measurements. So um, we budgeted initially 15000 in the CIP. And I don't believe the CIP borrowing has taken place yet. Um, but so I went and did another inspection of the roof panels this spring, took some pictures, which I included in the packet. Um, as you can see, the one at Sand Hill is super bad. Um, so I would like to update the cost estimates, but I also want to get estimates from a contractor to do the work for us. Uh, because it is masonry and welding project, also crane. Um, one roof panel is 10,000 pounds, so oh, it's yeah. not something we have the capacity to do with our own staff. Um, so I talk, briefly talked to Michael last week or two weeks ago about, you know, if there's a local contractor we should use. Of course, you know, I talked about using one of the big ones. He said the overhead costs are really high. Um, but we do have a great contractor, Norcon, which probably has the crane. The ability yeah. they do concrete work, um, they you do wood post work if you ask them to. Um, so they pretty much they have a diversified concrete services company. Um, so I would like to meet with them, get a cost estimate. But I didn't want to move forward with that amount of planning and work without the committee saying yes, we need to move forward with this. These are two locations technically, um, Sand Hill and Mock Miller, where we're planning on doing updates to those existing restrooms. Um, we plan on adding one at Mockbiller on the north end, but we weren't planning on actually doing any updates to the one at Mockbiller. Um, it's currently a 400 per hour capacity restroom facility. I know baseball would love to have it closer to the fields, but like I stated earlier, just due to the grind, grinder station lift pump and proximity to the existing sewer, um, you know, it's a long ways away from the baseball fields. Um, baseball usually does provide a portable restroom at Mock Miller just so it's closer because we do have Hall of Tebow there right now and pre Tebow. So they have a portable restroom closer. If the future construction of the yeah. restroom on the north end happens, it'll be close enough in proximity to ball fields. They'll have them close to the, the restroom or close to the shelter and uh, playground too. So the um, park is definitely big enough for two restroom facilities. That means 37 acres. Um, so it's actually the same size as actually a little bit bigger than Kennedy is currently. Mm -hmm. So, um, and two restroom facilities that we currently have in Kennedy don't serve the entire population, either nightly during baseball or especially during tournaments. So, um, just want to make sure I'm spending my time wisely on a project and I would go and request, um, you know, additional funding source. Um, as I say, there are a couple out there yet as far as uh, parkland dedication, which we need to use this year and has not been designated to a project at all yet. Um, but Jen Higgins has stated to me that we need to spend it. So it's just a trouble that we need to spend those funds this year. So if we have projects that we need to move, that we need to move forward with, um, this year is a good year to do that. And it's around 46,000. 46,000 parkland dedication. Which I believe we could do this project for the 15 that is budgeted in the CIP, um, inspect those other pails closer that I mentioned in there, and then a contract to do the replacement. I mean, we should be in the 25 to 30 range total, um, which 15 is budgeted in the CIP, but we haven't finalized that yet. We'll With some, Ehlers. We'll slap some paint on those doors too. Oh yeah, <laughs> we plan on doing that. <laughs> oh, we know. I just noticed that. No, that's 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 part of the overall yeah. making our parks look better, <laughs> from the playgrounds to the restrooms, yeah, the restrooms, the shelters. You know, I mean, new paint. Um, we haven't painted those doors. Well, it's within the last five years they've been painted because the last person that painted them last year was the first year not here, so. And they were here with us for five years. <laughs> so it's not a really good timeline, I said, but yes, it was painted within the last five to six years. But they all made it. Oh, yeah. 
yet the sun does a lot. And they're dark browns. <laughs> Thoughts, questions? I agree. All right, I'll do it again. I move to recommend moving <laughs> forward with the replacement of the roofing panels and repairs and forward to the Finance Committee a funding recommendation. Second. Motion by Covino, second by Isker. Motion's been approved. All in favor say aye. 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 Any more in discussion? Oppose? Motion passed. Number nine, possible next meeting date, March 25th, 2024. Topics for future meetings, playground border proposals. I can comment on that. Sure. I finally got the measurements from them on Saturday. So I should be able to get the RFP completed this week and get that out. Um, as we talked to staff, like a lot of the projects for the year are going out in March. So with concrete work, we need to get it out there as soon as possible. So okay. I'm glad it finally came in. They told me at the end of last week or early this week, it came in Saturday and I was working on it today. <laughs> Try to get some of it um, completed, additional, the, the new measurements that you us. So. Yeah, thank you. Uh, remarks from staff? Uh, so update on a few things going on. Um, we have started work on the infield project at Kennedy Park. Um, well, I shouldn't say we really started work, but we started bringing in ball diamond material. Last week, we had seven loads delivered to Kennedy Park. Um, we have one load yet to get uh, staged in the parking lot right now, and we're partially looking at spring weight limits as a factor in not getting it done as quick as possible. Um, I've been in contact with both youth softball and base and the school baseball. Uh, they're both looking for April 1 April 2 start dates. Uh, so we're looking at doing our portion, which is the irrigation and the um, getting the infield material here. So we just need to get one more load here. Uh, we had some truck issues last week. Um, like I said, stated the, we got the playground measurements. Talked to Ryan, who was here from Utaki. Um, they're actually working with Findorf. So they're drawing up plans for their facility already. Um, so they're moved, definitely moving forward. Um, as you could tell when I commented to them tonight, like they're hoping to have a shovel in the ground working on their facility this fall. So super motivated. Um, so they, they really want to move this project forward as quickly as possible. I just want them to be focused, hopefully in one direction versus three or four. I think that'll hurt it. I think it made sense. What we discussed last month was one strategy, move forward, stage it, and just keep moving forward with it. Um, me with disc golf, um, based on our agreement that we discussed with them last year, uh, secondary pin placements at Yellow Banks. Um, you may have noticed a huge washout at Yellow Banks um, from the pumping for the new wells, seven and eight. Um, if you haven't noticed that, there's a big um, sand trap. Hmm. Is that what you call it, Michael? Sand trap? <laughs> at Yellow Banks? <laughs> uh, so, I mean, they, when they were doing the test pumping, or Flushing, I should say, um, for the new wells. When I went over the bank, it started to roll over the bank and wash the sand out of the bottom. So, um, contractors are aware of it. It'll be taken care of at some point. Um, but so I'll be meeting with them. I'm supposed to meet with them today. But uh, the president of WAG, which is Western Area Disc Golf Enthusiasts, was cooking maple sap today. <laughs> <laughs> so later this week, I'm supposed to meet with. Thank you. Uh, remarks from committee members? No. You know? Remarks or announcements? Do we have a motion to adjourn Parks and Rec meeting? I'm not doing it. I <laughs> saw <laughs> <laughs> Motion by Isker, second by Clark. <laughs> Motion's been approved. I'll just pull a mark. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Any more discussion? Motion passed. Parks and Rec meeting is approved. Thank you all. Thank you. Actually, this call. <laughs>